Good morning, good morning, good morning. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I'm glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. Look, we are excited about being able to go into the Word of God. Listen, as you come on in the room, we're excited to have you here with us. We are digging into the Word of God today in such a great way. Last week was a great week because we went out and we went out with Day of Change and we went out and packed a lot of hearts, a lot of different people sold into their lives, gas cars sold into their lives, food line cars, loved on them, prayed with them, did a whole bunch of different things. And I know that some of you that are watching were active in that. And so we would love for you to share your testimony, share different things, how it impacted you, how it blessed you, how it changed your mindset, all those different things. So feel free to reach out, drop those things in the comments, whatever you can do. We are excited because we believe that the end of this year is going to be the best of this year. Amen. We believe that no matter how great things have been, it's going to get better. And no matter how bad things have been, it's going to get better. And God is going to do amazing things as we close out this year. Somebody say amen. Throw some hearts on that if you believe that. I just believe we should not discount the rest of this year just because we are close to the end. I believe that God is doing something on the inside of his church to where people are going to come into the body of Christ, that people are going to come to the knowledge of who he is, and that this Christmas is going to reset what people already know about Christ in the sense that there are people who have been pulled away, but they're going to come back to the knowledge of Christ. And this Christmas is going to be a real Christmas that this Christmas is going to be a real Christmas. Somebody say amen to that, that they're going to come to the knowledge of Christ and they're going to have more Christ in their life. Amen. They're going to have more Christ in their life. And I just believe as believers, God begins to pull on our spirits early so that we're in position for when that happens. Amen. Amen. So I want you to just get stirred up a little bit to increase your faith about what's about to happen throughout the end of this year and that God is going to continue to use you in a mighty way. We're praying for you already that you're going to be able to sow in a great way this year, that you're going to be able to give in the way that God has placed upon your heart to give. We just know that he gives seed to the sower. And so he's going to be able to, you're going to be able to do that this year. I just believe that I come into agreement. I come into alignment with you that you're going to be able to sow the way you want to sow as we go into this holiday season. And, and I just challenge you to have gratitude in your heart, to have gratitude in your heart in a great way that you find something to be grateful about. Look at your kids, be grateful. Look at your wife, be grateful. Look at your husband, be grateful. Look at your employment, be grateful. <sighs> I'm able to breathe air, be grateful. I'm able to swallow, be grateful. I'm able to walk, be grateful. I want you to have an overwhelming flow of this gratitude in your heart because God has given you everything you need and more. Sometimes we get caught up on the material things, but I'm challenging you today to understand that we got to have this spirit of gratitude as we live our life. It will bring health to our flesh. We walk in a spirit of gratitude. It will bring life and energy into our hearts. We walk in this spirit of gratitude. Find something to be thankful for. I opened up my eyes this morning. As the deacon said in the old church, my tongue did not cleave to the roof of my mouth, AKA, I, I, I'm, a, I'm up. My bed wasn't my cooling board as in the fact that I'm still alive. I know some of you might say, what in the world are you talking about? Those are some of the sayings that he said that, that I understood more as I grew up. That if I'm able to breathe and get up and able to move, it's a good day. God is faithful. And as we get ready to move into the message, I'm just thankful that you're here. We appreciate you for coming to service with us. We don't take you for granted. You are a real person. You're not just a, a number behind the screen. We're gonna reach out to you and, and talk to you. And that's why it's important that you drop things in the comments so that we can know that you're here, so that we can reach out and have a conversation with you and see how you're doing, see how your family is doing, see how we can pray for them. If you got prayer requests right now, please drop those in the chat so we can pray and we add those to our prayer list and we continue to pray over those every day. 
I want you to know that you are more than just a viewer, that you just as real to us as if you were sitting right here. We love you and we care about you. We want you to understand that. And so please drop your prayer requests in there. Email us, send them to us. We, we pray over those every day. Somebody say every day, every day, every day, every day. And so we want to make sure that we're covering your loved ones and your family as well. And so I want to pray now as we get ready to transition into the message. And so God, I thank you and I bless your name for the great things that you have done. I thank you for those who are coming in now, God, coming in with a heart of gratitude, coming in to worship, coming in to see you, to feel you, to know that you are real. We ask God that you would continue to just pour out your love upon them as they start this morning, this morning, where they were, whether they're going to a different church this morning or they're, they're preparing to, to go wherever they are, God, I ask that you just pour out your abundance of love, understanding, peace, joy, strength, endurance on them now in the name of Jesus, that they shall have more than what they need in every way, shape, or form. So God, we thank you for the great things you're doing in their life. We call them healed, healthy, whole, blessed, strong relationships in Jesus' name. And we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Listen, we want to make sure that you stay with us until the end. Create a space to where you can hear the Lord. We want you to save this message if it blesses your life. And we're pretty sure that it will. And we want you to share this message with somebody. Tag somebody in the comments. Invite them to church. We're getting ready to go into the message, y'all. I'm excited about the word. Let's go into it. Alignment power. Oh, man, it's going to be good. Bless the Lord on this Sunday morning. I dare you to give God a praise right where you are. I dare you to lift him up and give God a great big praise, even though you may not be actually in a church building, but you are right where you are. And he is right where you are. And I dare you to give him a great big praise for he is worthy to be praised. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He is true. He is awesome. And we lift up his holy and righteous name. There's none like him in all the earth. And I just believe that if you give Give God a praise in this moment that things will shift in your room, that the atmosphere will change in your car, and that you will be ready to receive what God has for you on this morning. I'm looking forward to the word of God. I'm excited already about what God is about to do through his word. Amen. Can we give God a praise right there? Bless the Lord. We're going to Matthew chapter 18. We're going to look at verse 19. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. And I'm excited to dig into this because this scripture just resonates in my heart so strong this year. And it's important for us to revisit uh, what God was speaking to us this year through this word. And so I'm excited about this word. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. It says this, again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. So simple. I want to read it again. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, and it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. I want you to pray with me under the topic of alignment power. Alignment power. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for those who you have joined together on this stream, God. For those who are watching the replay of this. For those who are in the moment as we speak. God, I thank you and I bless your name for them. And I ask God that the Holy Spirit will fill the space that they are in. That their life will be transformed, God, because of your word that their life will be transformed because of what you're doing in their life and how you speak to their heart. So Lord, I thank you for distractions being removed now in the name of Jesus. God, that something will pull on their heart and pull them right to where you need for them to be and deposit exactly what you need for them to have in their heart, that they may live a life that you are pleased with. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody say alignment power alignment power. See, when we started this year, God gave us a theme, alignment 2021. We realized that the scripture that he had gave us for this was Matthew 18, 19, which was cool because it was Matthew 18, 19, the year 2021 alignment. And they were all in alignment with the numbers. 
So that was real eye opening to us just how serious God was about this year coming out of 2020 with a lot of different things going on. It was interesting how God brought us into 2021 talking about this alignment. He brings us back to this moment where alignment has happened in so many different ways throughout our life, more than I can share on this right now. But there's something specific he wants to pull back up out of that as we end this quarter, because the year ain't over. So somebody say the year is not over. There are some people who have already determined that they are at the peak of what this year will bring. That is downhill from there to there. They're looking at their the end of year saying, oh, well, you know, we're just going to coast on out here. Uh, it, don't, it may not happen this year. We're going to prepare for next year. Um, you know, I, I don't really know if, you know, we're going to reach the goal that we had set out for. I don't know if God actually is going to do it this year. But I have come to challenge your faith. I have come to challenge your belief system and I challenge you to increase your faith. I challenge you to increase your belief. I challenge you to increase what you see in this moment. Don't let what you see get in the way of the vision. I dare for you to believe on the inside that God still can do great things in what's left in this year. I believe what God promised he said he's going to do. I believe what God said, he's not a man that he should lie. And if he said it, it shall come to pass in your life. I just believe that in this moment in time that we are not to just expect the norm for the rest of the year. I just believe that we are to expect what God promised us and begin to step into it with absolute faith. Somebody say alignment power. Alignment means a position of agreement or alliance. A position of agreement or alliance, which we talked about at the beginning of the year, really grasp it, got a hold of that. I want to specify or come to this moment of where we're hinging on this power, the ability to do something or act in a particular way, the ability to do something or act in a particular way. We unpacked this a little bit in the message last week, but we wanted to attach it to the alignment power. We understood that power is not just the fact that, you know, you've been given this position, that you've been given this, this, this strength, this energy. And no, but power is also the opportunity, the ability, the, the, the capacity to be able to act, influence, to be able to make an impact. That's power. And God specifically wants us to look at this with alignment power alignment power, the ability to come in a position of agreement or alliance, the ability to come into a position of agreement or alliance. Let's unpack this. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 says this. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. To understand what's happening in this moment, it's a fourth discourse in Matthew, often known as the discourse on the church. It includes the parables of the lost sheep, the unforgiven servant. He talks about the kingdom of heaven. The theme is the community of the church is talking about bringing the church together in unity. This this is what he's talking about all throughout this. And we realize that the enemy has been trying to dismantle the unity of the church in so many different ways. He always tries to disrupt and cause this, this discord among the church. See, chord it is a musical term is when things are different, but they flow together in harmony to create a, a sound that is pleasing. And when done correctly, it can lead you into worship. Amen. It can lead you into understanding that God is greater than you and you worship him if done correctly. However, when you have something that happens that causes a discord or causes dissonance or causes a note that doesn't fit with the others, and then you begin to get distractions. When somebody truly can't sing, it's hard to worship because you're distracted about the notes that are not supposed to be there. That's discord. That's dissonance. And you begin to look and you're like, I can't really sing how great is our God because you kind of off, you know. I can't really I can't really get into it because now I can I, you are the focus and we are no longer unified in this chord structure. So we can't really focus on God and worship the way that we should. That makes sense in music, but it also makes sense as we live our life that the enemy tries to sow things 
that will cause us not to walk in harmony and that we will have discord or dissonance amongst the brothers and sisters in Christ. Therefore, we can't create a sound to where people are directed towards heaven because all they can see is flesh and the wrong notes that are being played and they can't really focus on what it's supposed to be leading them to do. They see the church, but all they see is people bickering and talking about people and fake people and gossiping and all this different stuff. That's the discord. That's the dissonance. That's not the unity that God established when he established the church, that we would come together in unity, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And when we are unified, there is nothing that can be withheld from us. There's nothing that can stop us. And then the world see us unified and the kingdom of God begins to be glorified. Glorified and the kingdom of God originate from God is now the focus and God gets the glory. But many people can't get past the first step, which is unity, because they accept the bait that the enemy sows as discord. So we can't even focus on the lyrics of the song because the harmonies ain't right. So as we bring that back in, we begin to see this whole discourse on the unity of the church. And he, he, he shows us just how important it is that he would focus in the limited amount of space that he has to carry this gospel forward in text that he would focus so much on unity. And when we look back over 2020 or we look back over the history of man, we look back as far or as recent as you want to go is that the enemy keeps showing up in different forms to serve the same purpose to dismantle unity. He shows up in racism to dismantle unity. He shows up in politics to dismantle unity. He shows up into mask or not to mask. Yes, there's medical preferences and reasons for doing it, but I'm talking about how the church began to turn on each other and it began to separate the church to people who believe that you should worship with a mask on, people who believe that you should worship without a mask on, people who thought, and it began to cause this unity. And I know we can get into the medical of where we should and, and why we and all this other stuff, but I want you to see the bigger picture at hand and not get caught up in the minor details is the fact that it began to split the church. Anytime it begins to split the church, it is not God centered. If it becomes to split the church then you realize the devil is at work and you got to come up out of the details and look and say, hold up. Why is this dividing us? You got to look at the fact. That when the church starts to turn on itself, that the enemy is at work somewhere. Just shows up in different ways. And over the years, the enemy has been trying to cause the church to not to walk in unity and be dismantled. Yes, to mask, to not to mask. I understand that. To vote this way, to vote that way. I understand that. To go to this church, to go to that church. I understand that. To decide to do your hair like this or do your hair like that. I understand that. To decide to send your kid here or send your kid there, I understand that. Those are your choices and those are things that we have responsibilities for. And I'm not knocking the importance of them. But what I am saying is when it begins to divide the body of believers, we got to look at to see if the enemy is at work and causing separation within the body of Christ. Somebody say unity. Somebody say alignment. We got to get to the place where we understand that seeking you first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness is the forefront of what we should be doing. And then as we live through that, somebody say through that, as we live through that, then we can go into the responsibilities in a God centered way that we have when it comes to the different things that we must do. Because we do have responsibilities. But we got to look at. When my brother and sister in Christ is no longer welcome in my heart because of an issue or a preference, the enemy is at work. Oh, can I say it again? When a brother or sister is no longer welcome in my heart because of an earthly preference, then the enemy is at work trying to divide the church. 
Well, I don't talk to them because they go to that church. Well, I don't talk to them because, well, I don't talk to them because I ain't never going to deal with it. the body of Christ. And we wonder sometimes why we haven't seen the greatness of God released into our life because the muscle of grace and mercy and forgiveness in our life is not as strong as it should be. That is one of the things that Jesus had an abundance of no matter what was an abundance of grace and mercy. And yet time after time, we see miracle signs and wonder in his life. He had so much mercy that when Peter cut off the ear of the people who was coming to get him, that he picked it back up and healed the man. The people who were coming to take him in, he had enough grace and mercy to forgive them. He had enough grace and mercy to die for some folks who who really didn't want him, who didn't care about him, who didn't acknowledge who he was, but yet he stayed on the cross. He had enough grace and mercy that no matter who needed him, that he showed up. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever he had grace and mercy and forgiveness for whosoever. How can we expect the miracle signs and wonders that Jesus presented and the love that he shown until we have that level of grace, mercy, and forgiveness? We ain't even talking about the world yet. We talking about within the body of Christ. Some might say alignment, power. Alignment, power. When things try to separate you and divide you from other brothers and sisters in Christ, you have to understand that that is a cue that the enemy is at work. And what we must do is examine ourselves to make sure we're not the one being used. Oh, can we talk about it? Can we make sure that the enemy is not using us to divide the body of Christ? Sometimes what you know about somebody is so that you can pray, not so that you can tell somebody else. Sometimes what you know about somebody is not for you to change your opinion about them. Sometimes it's for you to know and pray and rather than tell somebody else. Sometimes how you feel about people is for you to be able to use as a safeguard in your life. And the Holy Spirit showed you because they're on a specific point in your journey. OK, great. I understand that. And there's physical responsibilities and adjustments to be made. Hey, if the person you see that they they're in the body of Christ, but they still lock up your doors, lock up your cabinets, but still love them. And it's not for you to go tell everybody else, but it might be for you to lock your cabinets and pray still lock your cabinets. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that sometimes when God shows you things, it's not for you to broadcast, it's for you to go back to him and pray and show up for that person in some type of way. Be sure that the devil ain't using you to sow discord amongst the church. Some might say alignment power. It says in Matthew 18, 19, it says this again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree, if you're taking notes, I want you to just write down agree again. I say unto you that if two of you shall agree, agree means to be in harmony, to come into agreement, to be settled on a bargain. If two of you shall come to terms. If two of you shall decide and come into terms, come into a belief, come into a standard, come into agreement, come into a focus, come into an alignment of power, come into an alignment of capacity, come into an alignment of agree, come into a space where you guys decide, determine, determine that you settle on the fact that this is what we're going to do. See, I got a friend that's, that's building a house from the ground up and he talked about the plans that he has and all this different stuff. They had to come into agreement that this is what they're going to do. Two people had to come into agreement. The architect had to design it and he had to come into agreement with the architect that this is what we're going to do. And when they agreed, now they're able to come and pull the resources to do what they agreed on. If they didn't agree, then they might have been building one thing when it really wasn't the plans that he designed. And there would have been a disagreement and then it would not be what it is today. Sometimes we aren't seeing what God wants to do in our life because we're in disagreement. 
God is saying, I want to do this in your life. And you're saying, I want what they have in their life. God says, I've given you this family, but you're in disagreement because you're still praying for that family. Not praying for that family in the sense of God bless them. You praying that your family will end up looking like that family. And God says, I've given you your family for a reason. God has placed favor upon your life to get that car, but you won't get that car because you see somebody else and you want agreement for that car. And God is saying, I've placed favor on your life for this car in this season, but you won't come into agreement with that because you want what they got. Oh, come on, come on. Sometimes you got to love what God gave you, even if it don't look like what you love, because it's here for this season and God's going to use it to get you to the next season. And you got to be able to trust God and come up under submission of what God wants to do in your life. God don't always give you what you want, but he does give you what you need inside of what he presents to you. And sometimes the house is in the forest and you're just praying for the house and God gives you the forest. And if you would just commit and submit yourself, you would see that everything you need is in what he gave you. And as you begin to humble yourself and you begin to beat your flesh back when you're tired, but you're still cutting down trees and you're still getting the boards out and you still begin to build when you don't feel like it. Then all of a sudden what comes out of you is greater than what you saw from this person. And God begins to form what he designed just for you. And you realize that it fits you better than what you thought you wanted. God's giving you this wife, but you see that one over there. You say, oh, I, that, that's what I really want, God. And God says, if you would just nurture this right here, there's something fit for you inside of this right here. And if you would just submit, if you would just love and pour into then then the wife that you're looking for will come up out of that, what you thought wasn't enough. The child that you thought this one was, if you would just nurture that and do what I called you to do, you will see something come up out of that child that you didn't know was there. If you would just submit to what God has called you to do in their life, that he will pull something up out of that. And it it looked like it's coming up out of them, but truly it's coming up out of you as you humble yourself. We got a head up here sometimes when God says, I'm still God. I'm still on the throne. I'm still the almighty. My ways are still higher than your ways. My thoughts are still higher than your thoughts. And though you think it should have went like this, I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans of, oh, whoo. and when we realize this, when we realize that he knows the plans, not that we know the plans, that he knows the plans. And as he leads us in God is that we would trust him. Some of us have lost the opportunity and lost, not the opportunity, but lost the capacity to trust God because we know better and we got to trust God even when we don't understand that is the true identity and key of sonship is that even when you don't understand you trust the father My boys have questions sometimes that I don't answer right away, but I say get in the car and they get in the car because even though they don't understand, they trust the father. Some of you guys standing outside the car and won't get in the car until God answer all your questions. He's not obligated to answer all your questions. He's obligated to tell you what to do, where to go. And it's your obligation to obey what he says and then get out the car when he says get out the car and places you into a moment that you've been designed for. But some of you aren't getting to your moment because you refuse to go where he told you to go and get into the car the way he said get into the car. But you're still questioning him. And he says, I'm not obligated to tell you nothing other than the fact that you need to get in the car. Because I'm taking you somewhere. Somebody say, he's taking me somewhere. He's taking me somewhere. He's taking me to a place that I've never been before. He's taking me to a place that I've never seen before. He's taking me to a higher level that people in my circle haven't experienced before. He's taking me to a place that I've never been before. That's why the climate is changing. That's why what I had on don't work for where I'm going. That's why I had to shift my mindset. That's why I couldn't take you into this next level. That's why I couldn't do this the way I did it before. That's why things are different here. That's why it's uncomfortable because he's taking me someplace I've never been before. But I guarantee that when the father that gets me there that he's able to bring me there he's able to keep me while I'm there and I'm going to trust him and lean and depend on him 
as I move into this school year, as I move into this job, as I move into this new career, as I move into this new moment, as I move into this new opportunity, that if God is able to bring me here, he's able to keep me here and not keep me as and stay here, but he's able to sustain me. He's able to put favor on me. He's able to open up doors that no man can close so that I can be all he's called me to be. In this moment, and in this per, in this moment, in this place, in this position in time, that God will speak to my heart and lead and guide me. I trust him enough to get in the car, even if I don't know where we're going. Alignment power. Alignment power. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this on earth. On earth. I want you to look at this. Because we have to understand that what he is doing in our hearts is not detached from what he is doing in the earth. It says this. And again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth. If two of you shall agree on earth. Somebody say on earth. When we realize the fact that we got to get back to reality. We got to get to a place where we realize that, that our spiritual walk will quicken our mortal body. We got to get to the place where we realize that our, our moments with God should show up in our real life. The church over the years have had these two different worlds going on that you you got your your Monday through Friday world and you got your 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 spiritual Saturday Sunday world as you gear up for church and and the world really doesn't understand what happens in the spirit so you compartmentalize them both and it's like I got my spiritual holy world when I go to church hallelujah praise the lord sing dance lift them up do all those different things. And then on Monday, I'm just detached from the spiritual nature. I do my my physical hands work. And that's where I have the balance of my spiritual life and my work life. But I need you to understand that your spiritual life should impact your real life. And though the world non-believers don't understand the spiritual aspect yet, they should recognize something different in your life. They should recognize the fruit that God is, is, is revealing in your life. Though they may not understand it, they should realize what it is. They should be able to identify that there's life in you. They should be able to identify there's something different about you. They should be able to identify that something inside of you is calling to the void that's inside of them and it begins to be attractive to them. The one thing you must realize as believers is that when you have that life on the inside of you, that when people are drawn to you, it's not because your hair so fly. It's not because your outfit so nice. It's not because you so smart or because you got all these degrees. It's not because you got all these things. It's because all of mankind, all of creation longs and waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. And when you manifest yourself as a son of God, it's been waiting for this moment. Therefore, they're attracted to you to say, I've been waiting for this. I don't know what it is on the inside of you, but something inside of you attracts me, but you got to recognize what the attraction truly is so you don't get caught up in the physical when you should be giving them something spiritual. Woo, let me run that back. That was quick. I need for you to understand that when the attraction happens, you got to realize that you need to give them something spiritual and not give them something physical because what they're attracted to is the spiritual nature that's on the inside of you. It is that life. It is that energy. It's that vitality that's coming up out of you as you connect with the Lord. It overflows out of your life and then they want something and it gets impactful to them and they want it. And you got to make sure that you don't take the glory of what God is doing in your life, that you give them the God that gave you the glory. You give them the God that has the overflowing life that's inside of you, that you give them that God, but you don't just take the glory for yourself. Because once you take the glory for yourself, then I can't flow through you, saith the Lord, like I want to flow through you because it's all about building my kingdom and not your ego. We got to understand that when people are attracted to us, that it is a platform that God has given us to give him the glory. We got to understand that when we play so well and they're attracted to that, that we give God the glory. 
We got to understand when we preach so strong and they're attracted to that, it's because of God's glory. Understand that when your marriage is so strong and, and they come and, and they, they're, they're excited and they're attracted to it, that you understand that had it not been for the Lord that was on our side, where would we be? That it's not because I'm so great, but it's because of what God is doing in our hearts. And you can have it too. Let me tell you about Jesus. Until we get to that point, there's a limitation of what God can do in our life. And we got to get back to being on earth. Somebody say on earth. We got to get back to reality in the sense that what God is doing in our spiritual being and our hearts is for to impact the earth that we live in. We are not of the world, but yet we are in the world to impact the world, to leave an impression, to change things that we shall not be conformed, but we should be transformed and let that transformation cause us to show up different in the same reality that we have to face. That when I pray and I get into the word of God, that something happens in my spirit and I show up to the same job differently. That when I seek the Lord and I fast and my spirit man comes alive, I'm not so spiritual that I left earth, but I'm back in reality with the same physical human being surrounding me. But yet my physical man shows up different because of what God is doing in my heart. Somebody say on earth. Some of us have been waiting so long for God to do something through a spiritual being. And God is saying, I'm quickening your spiritual being so that you can show up with your physical hands and change the situation. Oh, the Lord just going to do something. Yes, he is. He's going to give you insight, vision, favor and opportunity for you to be able to do something with your hands to change the world that exists around you. Come on. Somebody say on earth, you got to get back to reality, understanding that spiritual insight does not remove you from physical responsibility. Spiritual insight does not remove you from physical responsibility. I promise if you pray and you pray and you pray that it will not pay your bills. Someone might be impacted to give to you, but you still got to put in your card number to pay the bill. I know y'all might text me and email me. Well, Lord, I prayed one time and this happened. However, somebody had to have the physical responsibility to show up and pay that thing for you. It may have got paid in a way that you didn't know about, but somebody had to type in their card number in the physical realm to release what you prayed about in the spiritual realm. You got to understand that sometimes God is using you to birth out what he shows somebody else in the spirit spiritual realm. Sometimes you got to realize that your blood, sweat, and tears if birthing out a vision that he promised to somebody you never met. He, so, he says he's giving you power to get wealth that he may establish the covenant which he made with your father's father. I need you to understand that sometimes the creative ideas that he's placed on the inside of you that you are to release is because he promised it to a generation that you never met and now he's going to use your hands to fulfill a spiritual promise that he promise to other people, to your great, great grandfather, that he may establish his covenant that he made unto your fathers as it is this day. That's what the word says. Why am I overwhelmed with these creative ideas? Because I promised it to your great grands that I would give you the alignment power to birth something up out of you. I promised it to people that you never met. I promised it to your great, great grands that I would give you something that you could birth out of you that would cause your great, great grands to flourish. But you waiting for God to do it. And God said, I did my part. I gave you the idea. I gave you the song. I gave you the poem. I gave you the layout. But you treating it as if it's just something regular. And you not realizing that the idea I just dropped on you 
was from your great grandfather's prayer. And I promised him that I would give it to you and I would give you the alignment power, the opportunity to come into agreement with it and birth it out in the earth. I hope this is blessing somebody. We got to get back to reality because we exist in a world that requires our response. That means our response ability says this as touching any thing as touching as touching when we look at what God has promised us we got to move and, and believe and be in that thing as we are touching it we got to we got to see what God has placed on the inside of us, even though we're not there yet, we go there internally and we can smell it. We can feel it. We can touch it. We can hold them. We, we know so much so that when it happens for real, it's almost a deja vu moment. It's like I've been here before because I saw this before I actually got here. When I realize and I come into agreement with what God is saying in my life, all of a sudden, even though it's not seen in the physical, there's something that happens on the inside of me that allows Allows me to visit it even though it hasn't existed in the physical realm. I hear the song before it's recorded. I see the image before I paint it. There is something going on the inside of me before I share it. I need for you to sell to understand that what God has doing on the inside of you is real even though it's not real yet. It's just as real in the spiritual realm as it will be in the physical if we would allow ourselves to get into it as touching. Reminds me of Thomas. He says, I believe when I put my hands in your side. I believe when I'm touching. And we got to get to a place where even though it's in this, because Jesus was a spirit, that, that, that when we can touch it in the spirit, that it will cause us to believe. I don't want you to serve nowhere that you can't believe. I don't want you to move after something that you don't really believe. I understand about hoping and wishing, but I need for you to move with some power that you actually believe that it's going to happen, that you're trying to unwrap something that truly exists, that you are tearing through the obstacles that are in your way so that you can get to something that you haven't seen yet, but yet you know is there. On Christmas morning, we tear through different presents because we realize there's something on the inside. Though we can't really understand fully what it is yet, but as I I tear through the obstacles and I begin to unpack this thing. I realize there's some value in there that I'm yet to see. I know that I've prayed for it. I know that I've asked for it. I know that it's a possibility that's coming this way. So therefore, this wrapping paper, no matter how tight they wrapped it, I'm going to rip through it so that I can open it up and get to what it was promised to me. And I wish some people would come into their heart and rip through the obstacles that are coming their way so they can get to what God promised them. No matter what comes my way, I realize and I visited it as touching that I know that is real. I know that is real. And that we got to know that is real, that we've mapped out, considered, planned, made it plain, looked for the pitfalls, gone after it, stood in it, looked around in it, even though it doesn't physically happen yet. And declare that it will. Somebody say declare that it will, that we'll declare that it shall be established, that we'll declare that nothing shall stop us from having it. That we'll declare that God is faithful, that we'll declare that they are saved, that we'll declare that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that we can ask or think that we'll declare what God has to say for us. And not let anything stop us from walking into what God has promised and be bold enough to take this down and ask. Somebody say, ask. And ask. We're getting ready to close this thing out. And it says, that they shall ask. Many of us don't ask for what God has promised us. I want you to understand this, that we're talking about the on earth responsibility here, that we're talking about the fact that we have prayed about it, we have seen it, we have visited it, but sometimes on earth we don't ask for it. 
We wait till somebody's getting ready to give it to us because we have the fear of rejection that it may or may not happen. But when you have visited something and you know that God has called you to have it and you deserve it and you realize that God has unfolded and allowed you to have access to it, you got to go up and ask. <laughs> we were talking about music earlier and how we have these things called will call tickets and where they you get the ticket and someone may have purchased it for you and you go up to the counter and the ticket is there for you. However, you will not get your ticket until you walk up to the counter and ask for your ticket. You ain't got to pay for it. You just got to ask for it. And some of us have not stepped into what God has called us to because we haven't asked. And I ain't saying about we ain't asked God. I'm talking about we haven't showed up in the reality of this world and asked. We ain't went to the bank and asked. We haven't gone to the job and asked. We haven't gone to the college and asked and say, guess what? Hey, I I'm supposed to be here. Um, uh, where do I put my application? Where do I put this in? And we put it in and we ask. Because we got some folks with alignment power. Somebody say, ask boldly. Ask boldly. Ask boldly. And the reason that we're going to ask boldly is because of this. And it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. It shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven, because all of heaven is coming behind me to back what we are doing here in the earth, because it's all about kingdom building. So when I stand in front of you in reality and ask what you don't see is the fact that heaven is behind me of my father, which is in heaven, and he is doing it through us and the favor of God is upon us. So therefore, even though you don't think you should, something comes upon you and you don't even realize why you're giving it to us. You don't understand why the door is opening. You don't understand why this opportunity is coming your way. It is because it's not being done by you. It is being done of his father that is in heaven. And so from, from him, from there, all blessings flow. And so it comes down and flows through you and you get into this opportunity because God wants to position you there. Some of us won't ask because we're looking at it in our strength, but God wants you to look at it, his strength. He says, it will be done of my father, which is in heaven. What's backing you ain't here on earth. You're not backed by the resources here on earth. You're backed by what God wants to do in your life. And I need for you to show up and ask. This may be why you need that person to agree with you because you may not be bold enough to go by yourself. But if you have that person that will agree with you as touching, uh huh. if any two of you outside yourself shall agree and come into agreement that this is what we're going to do and step into this thing, we'll remember the fact that it is of God who is in heaven that's backing us. And that's going to unlock this next part in your life because of alignment power. Alignment power. God has given you the space to agree with someone else. He's given you the opportunity to agree with someone who don't look like you. He's giving you the opportunity to agree with someone who don't vote like you. He's giving you the opportunity to agree with someone who doesn't go to church with you. He's giving you the opportunity to agree with someone who's not in the same age bracket as you. He's giving you the opportunity to agree with your spouse. He's giving you the opportunity to agree with your kids. He's giving you the opportunity to agree with your family and with your brothers and sisters. He's giving you the opportunity to stand up and agree with community leaders. He's giving you the opportunity to show up in a world where people would have disagreements but he's put the grace on you to bring people together. He's giving you the opportunity to come into agreement. He's giving you alignment power. And when you come into alignment and the two of you shall agree on anything as touching, nothing shall be withheld from you and it will be done unto you of my father, which is in heaven. If you ask, I just believe there's some people who need the boldness of God in their heart. Who would dare to believe? Who would dare to show up in reality and ask for what God has shown them in the spirit and begin to believe like nobody's business that God is faithful enough to stand behind his word and begin to exercise faith and show up in a way that says, listen, I will not be denied. I will not be defeated. Delay does not mean denial. And I'm going to show up because if God said it, I believe it. And ain't nobody going to tell me nothing different. God going to have to tell me he changed his mind in heaven because I'm not going to stop believing on earth that I'll stand on his word to the day that he performs it in my life and I know that God is faithful and you can't change my mind about it. 
We got to get to a place where we got risky faith to believe God for the miraculous and stay in toe to toe with surety and say, I may not got surety in the natural, but I sure know that God is faithful. I may not got surety in the bank account, but I sure know that God is faithful. I may not got surety in my current resources, but I sure know that God is faithful, that I got alignment power, that I come into agreement in a position of alliance. And when I line myself up with word of God, there is nothing that shall be withheld from me because I know that God is faithful. And so when we realize that, we realize that the alignment power that he's given us is the ability to step over differences and grab somebody by the hand and say what we praying for. The ability to step over social differences and say, I know what they said, but we ain't worried about that. We in the kingdom of God. What we praying for? I know they don't like you, but I'm going to step over that rumor and grab your hand. And we're going to pray in what we believe in for. And the next thing I know, we got black people and we got white people and we got Republicans and we got Democrats and we got rich people and we got financial challenge people and we got babies and we got older people and we got mature life saints and we got country folks and we got city folks and we got brown folks and we got Asian folks and we got people who are from different places all together, standing together, giving God praise and beginning to worship and begin to give God a sound that's harmonious so that the world can see who God truly is and that he can see that God is faithful that God is true. And even though the enemy has tried to sow discord, that he cannot divide us because we'll step over the little tricks that he's tried to do. And I'll hold your hand and I'll give God the praise for you. And I'll intercede to get down on my knees and pray and intercede to the Lord for you because I realize that God is faithful, not just to me, but he's an abundant God, that he has enough grace and mercy for my family. And he has enough grace and mercy for your family. He got enough healing power to heal me. And he got enough healing power to heal you that God is faithful and just and true. So I will stand in the gap for whoever needs to be standing in the gap for. And it doesn't matter what they tried to divide us with because I realize that God's grace and mercy is sufficient for all of us. And then the power that the enemy tried to cut off doesn't work because we got alignment power. Grace and mercy will cause alignment power to flow because it'll cover a multitude of sin, a multitude of differences, a multitude of preferences, a multitude of mistakes, a multitude of shortcomings, a multitude of he said and she said, a multitude of rumors, a multitude of shortcomings, a multitude of so many things. Grace and mercy will cover it and we'll come into alignment and the power of God will be released. I believe in this last quarter that grace and mercy is going to be what's going to release what you've been praying for and believing for in your life. The power to let go of it. I feel the Holy Ghost. The power to let go of it. The power to shake off what they said. The power to reach over what divided you. The power to call somebody up and say what we're believing for. The power to unify. The power to pick my head up out of what's happening in my own life to see what's happening in somebody else. And we're going to come into alignment. We're going to come into agreement. And when you share what God is doing in your heart, I'm going to agree it's touching because I'm going to live in it. I'm going to see it like you see it. I'm going to empathize with you. I'm going to feel it like you feel it. I'm going to be excited about it like you excited about it. I'm going to see that baby's face like you see that baby's face. We're going to hold them in the spirit together. Oh, we're going to be there together and God's going to do something amazing. And we're going to see God's faithfulness come to pass. And I just believe God wants to do something special in your heart. And I believe that God is speaking to your heart right now in a very special way. And I want you to understand that God did not bring you to this moment for no reason. And I want to pray with some folks on here right now. Because God's going to do something special in your life. And if you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart, I need for you not to take this moment for granted. 
that he's giving you the power and the capacity to come into alignment and agreement with what he has done on the cross for you. And I want you to pray this prayer after me. And it says this, dear Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and I accept you into my heart. I renounce Satan, make my salvation real to me and lead me by your Holy Spirit. God, for those who are on the line right now that are going through a point in time where it's hard for them to believe again, I ask that you stretch them in their faith, that you cause their faith to be built up, that you reveal to them the people who are around them that need them and the people who are around them that will come into agreement with them and that alignment power that will allow it to flow in their life. God, I thank you for healing, miracle signs and wonders taking place in the body of believers now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for unity in a way that we never imagined happening, even in this last quarter now in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, I ask that you continue to speak to their hearts. Fill them up to the overflowing now in the name of Jesus. God, heal the hearts of, of brokenness. Heal the hearts that of, uh, of disappointment. Heal the hearts of those who have gone through so much for so long you will cause them to be encouraged and built up now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we bless your name for them and we call them blessed, healed, whole, delivered, and set free. Peace that surpasses all understanding be evident in their life. So Lord, we thank you and we bless your name for the great things that you're going to do for them. Be free, be whole by the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, the church said, amen. And we put those hands together and give God a praise because he has done great things in the life of ourselves and our brothers and our sisters. God is great and greatly to be praised. I just believe that God has done something great in your heart today. And I believe that that alignment power is going to come alive and well on the inside of you. That you're going to realize that there's some people around you that may have been overlooked, that as you agree with them, power is going to be released in your life. There's some people in your life that you've been walking past, and God's going to allow you to see them. And you're going to grab them by the hand, and you can begin to pray for them, pray for them and pray with them, and say what we believe in for. And you're going to see great things happen in their life and in yours. God is doing an amazing thing. Don't count the last quarter out. Don't count the last quarter out. God is still able. And I bind up the enemy that will cause you to believe that this Christmas is not going to be what you thought it was going to be. I believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above your expectation of what this Christmas is going to be. I believe that you're going to be able to give in a way that you never imagined this Christmas. I believe that God is going to give seed to the sower and that you're going to be able to sow into people's life like you never imagined because of God's faithfulness. I dare you to believe him for it. I dare you to roll back doubt and roll back the need to be sure about it in the natural to believe him for it in the spiritual. Listen, God is doing amazing things. And we just know that God is faithful and that you trust him, you do what he tells you to do with your hands and you will see his promises in your life. Look, you want to sow into the ministry, those prompts are coming up on the screen now. You can sow a, a couple different ways. Last week we went out and we blessed lives through the day of change. If you got testimonies from that, we ask that you share them with us as God begins to move on the hearts of those out there. We got exciting things stirring for the end of the quarter, exciting things stirring for the new year. We believe God for great things and you are a part of that. And so we're excited for your opportunity to sow into the ministry. We're excited for your opportunity to worship with us. And we're excited for what God is doing through our relationship. Listen, we are centered on God, declaring his truth and living in faith. He is relevant. You are relevant. We are relevant. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you.